untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today I'm very excited to introduce you this Monored Fires of Invention deck. This is a blast from the past requested by one of my supporters on Patreon, a 4 mana enchantment saying we can cast spells only during our turn and we can cast no more than 2 spells each turn, but we can cast spells with mana value less than or equal to the number of lands we control without paying their mana costs. So Fires can give us a huge mana advantage, especially in a deck that also has a lot of activated abilities, that way we can still use use our lands to generate an advantage while casting two spells for free. And this deck has basically all these synergies covered with some classics like Cavalier of Flame, which is one of the best follow-ups to a Fires of Invention on turn 5. This is 6-5, and when it enters a battlefield we can discard any number of cards and then draw that many cards. Also useful to get rid of excess copies of Fires, which we typically don't need. And then for 1 and a red, creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain haste until end of turn. So if turn 4 we play the Fires, then at turn 5 we can play Cavalier for free alongside maybe another creature like let's say a second cavalier and then still have five mana available to activate cavalier twice give all our creatures plus one plus oh and haste repeatedly and potentially hit the opponent for a ton of damage and then when a cavalier dies it also deals a bit of damage on the way out equal to the number of lands in our graveyard and we're often discarding lands in the late game so that can also add up and a great synergy with Cavalier of Flame is Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which as we all know is just an individually powerful card, making a Shaman that makes treasure tokens, also making us discard and draw on the second chapter, another way to get rid of excess lands or copies of Fires of Invention, and eventually Reflection of Kiki Jiki can help us copy creatures like Cavalier of Flame, and Cavalier can even give our Reflection haste so we can activate it the turn we get it, so we can start making copies of Cavalier right away, which will draw us more cards, deal more damage, and also when we sacrifice the cavalier end of turn can deal a bit of damage on the way out if we have lands in our graveyard so just a ton of great synergies but we haven't even covered the most exciting part of this deck which is a turn two cleansing wildfire because often if you're playing a fires of invention deck it would be nice to play fires on turn three with access to four lands already so we can start cheating spells into play a turn sooner but if we're playing mono red, we typically don't get access to ramp cards we would have to play blue green to get access to growth spiral but then we're forced to play three colors and that makes it tricky to play all the cards we want so instead now we get to play with cleansing wildfire a sorcery typically aimed at the opponent's lands to destroy them and replace them with a basic land drawing a card in the process but now thanks to darksteel citadel being added in the explorer anthology we have access to eight indestructible lands that we can play in our mono red deck that way we can target our own indestructible land with cleansing wildfire basically ramping by getting a basic land as we don't lose our indestructible land in the process and draw a card as well so just a strictly better version than Rampant Growth. And then sometimes in the late game we can also use this on opposing creature lands for instance to take those out. So Cleansing Wildfire plus Indestructible Lands is a great combo, giving us access to 4 mana on turn 3, where we can not only cast Fires of Invention but maybe a Chandra Torch of Defiance. Also a great follow-up to Fires of Invention, if we cast it we can still cast a spell in the same turn for free, and Chandra is a great one, as it can deal 4 damage to a creature, giving it built-in protection, can also add double red to our mana pool, which is another great way to maybe use our activated abilities for from Cavalier or the one from Golos which we'll get to in a second can also provide extra damage and card advantage with the first plus one and the emblem also quite attainable at minus seven to give us an emblem dealing five damage to any target whenever we cast a spell which is a great way to close out the game. Then looking at the rest of our deck we've got some cheap removal with the full set of Voltage Surge dealing 2 damage to a creature or planeswalker, can also sacrifice an artifact to deal 4 damage instead, and besides the treasure tokens that we get from our Goblin Shaman, we can also actually sacrifice our Darksteel Citadel as an artifact land if we're in a pinch and really just need to deal 4 damage. And then we also have access to the Stomp from Bone Crusher dealing 2 damage. We can cast the 4-3. And the Giant is actually quite useful once we get a Cavalier down as an extra body that we can pump, give haste to, and deal quite a bit of damage with. And then we also have a Sweeper with Sweltering Suns dealing 3 damage to each creature. And the Cycling ability on Sweltering Suns also synergizes very nicely with Fires of Invention, as we can cast our 2 spells for free, still have our lands untapped to potentially pay the 3 to cycle Sweltering Suns, which does not count as casting a spell, so we can even do it in the opponent's turn and get around the Fires restriction. 
And then we also have three copies of Golos Tireless Pilgrim, a 3-5 legendary artifact creature, so it could also be sacrificed to Voltage Surge in a pinch, but we're unlikely to do it, as it gets to find a land when it enters a battlefield, including our non-basic lands, so we typically want to get a copy of Den of the Bugbear, a great creature land that wasn't around in standard when the fires was legal, and it's actually quite amazing as we can activate it on turn 5 alongside casting two spells for free and get in a ton of extra damage. And then Golos can maybe also find a copy of Cascading Cataracts if we don't have one in play already. Besides being an indestructible land to ramp with our Cleansing Wildfire, it can also help us activate Golos's ability for two and one of each color to exile the top three cards of our library, and then we can play them this turn without paying their mana costs. So great ability to take over the late game and a ton of fun as well. So yeah, that's our deck. We've got our 8 indestructible lands for Den, and then the channel land also quite synergistic with fires, as we can potentially sink our mana into it to make some 1-1 tokens, which can also add up alongside our cavalier. So hopefully I covered all the synergies here. Let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a very promising hand. Turn to Wildfire, turn 3 Chandra is the plan. So make sure to play Den first into... Darksteel Citadel, up against a red-white heroic deck, which can be quite aggressive. Now we can also Stomp, but I think I prefer maybe Stomping after we play Chandra next turn, adding mana instead. And for now just Ramp. Anger pumping hoplites, enabling magecraft on Lumimancer. And a Defiant Strike as well. Alright, so if our opponent's tapped out, we could also Chandra just deal for damage to the hoplite, as opposed to Chandra plus up to 5 loyalty, stomp Lumimancer, but then Chandra's likely falling to the hoplite. And it's going to be easier to kill Lumimancer with Stomp later. So we'll take this trade. Let's do this. Oh, that's nasty. So we're unlikely to keep Chandra alive here. Arcanists. And Homestead Courage pumping Lumimancer. Luckily still dies to Stomp from Bone Crusher, and the Sweltering Suns is gonna clean up even better. So let's try that. And still have a Stomp available. So I'm liking our spots so far. Another Arcanist could be a problem. Hoplites. We might be able to beat. Also interesting to note, Hoplite can prevent damage, but Stomp specifically says damage cannot be prevented, which can also come up. And yeah, managed to take out the Hoplite here, play Golos. Already have a Cascading Cataract, so we can get another Den of the Bugbear, perhaps. And our opponent packs it in. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got plenty of cheap interaction here into a Golos to help us take over the late game. And a wildfire is perfect. So we get to ramp on turn 2. Maybe take out a cheap creature from the opponent first. Like a Lenor Elves. And be on our way. And not only do we get to ramp, we also get to draw a card. So eat your heart out, ramp and growth. The Leaf Champion conveniently dies to Chandra. So couldn't have asked for a better start. I guess the Fires of Invention would have made it even better, but we'll find it eventually. Plenty of removal to keep the green deck at bay. Mammoth dies to Sweltering Suns. So the land Golos gets enters the battlefield tapped, so it won't be able to Golos plus Sweltering Suns. So I think we'll wait on Golos, make sure we protect our Chandra. Just add some mana. 
And play a Bone Crusher. Double Stomping, also an option. Scavenging Ooze will grow here. Up to a 4 4 potentially. And then eventually a 5 5 as well. Cavalier, not a bad draw. So if I add mana with Chandra, I could play Cavalier and activate it, smashing the opponent for quite a bit of damage. Sure, they can kill Chandra on the way back, but then we're setting up for an even bigger attack on the following turn. So that could be a fine strategy, or we can try and protect Chandra, but it's not going to kill the Ooze if it picks up another counter. So I'm kind of liking the Cavalier line of play. And then do I keep my Cascading Cataracts? Or Bone Crusher, or do I discard them? Could see getting rid of both. And a fire is not bad. So for now, activate Cavalier. Attack with the team. And that's 12 damage. Next turn, we can fires. And uh, if we draw land, maybe still activate Cavalier besides playing Golos. So it's going to be tricky for the opponent to both deal with our threats, including our Planeswalker, and keep enough back on defense to survive. Maybe a Primal Might killing Cavalier, keeping the Ooze back. All right, that's what happens. Could still see them taking out Chandra. But then we can also attack with our Den if we really want. And put your opponent to one, and then Chandra can finish them off. Although Ooze could potentially gain a couple more points here, so maybe it's just better to take out the Ooze with Chandra. You wanna play with fire, huh? Oh, that's nasty. Opponent unloads, and the Sweltering Sun's looking mighty fine. So, what's our play? Plus this for mana. Play Fires. And then we can attack first, and then clean up with Sweltering Sun's, or we can just cast Golos and chill. And then next turn, wipe the board. And then I can also cycle one of these. And already have cataracts, but might as well get another den. Okay. So we've cast our two spells, so could only cycle Sweltering Suns there. Opponent's got a Great Henge, maybe a reason to attack with Bone Crusher last turn. But that's okay. Sweltering Suns still gonna clean up and open up an attack with Den as well. So I'll cycle one of these. And then we want to cast this for zero mana. Activate Den, and this is lethal, but we could still activate Chandra or cast our Bone Crusher Giant. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing an indestructible land to go with Wildfire, but still functional with a stomp into maybe a Sweltering Suns. Thoughtseize can have a look. Probably takes Chandra or Bone Crusher is my guess. Actually goes for the Wildfire and yeah, paid off as we actually drew the Darksteel Citadel to enable it. I guess there's a tiny chance her opponent just doesn't have many basic lands. Happy to stomp the ooze while we can. So we're putting it on an abs on mid-range deck, perhaps. And they're perhaps holding a tireless tracker, but they didn't want to play it and not get any value, which is understandable. I guess we'll keep the fourth land a secret and just play Bone Crusher here. And then Chandra can clean up a tireless tracker without needing to kill her own Bone Crusher with Sweltering Suns. 
Right, vanishing verse deals a little bit of damage on the way out. And probably see tracker plus land. Alright. Voltage Surge can also take it out. So I'm actually not hitting Chandra plus 4 mana and then Voltage Surge. The only drawback is another Vanishing Verse exiling Chandra without us getting more value from it first. But uh, yeah, I think it's still worth it. That way we keep the 4 damage ability for maybe a bigger creature. And we increase our loyalty. Probably gonna plus for mana so we can play our Cavalier, maybe give it haste. Right, another Vanishing Verse was the worst case scenario here. And uh, yeah, probably cycle this in case we can find a, a land for the turn. And then we've got a pretty powerful hand still. Siege Rhino does not trade for Cavalier, at least. So if I play Cavalier now, I wouldn't be able to give it haste, so I'm kind of liking Golos first to get another Den. And then uh, I think I'm still fine playing out the Cataracts, as we may be able to activate Golos as well. And then next turn, play Cavalier and activate it. Siege Rhino attacking. Could imply that they have a sweeper like Languish or Meatook Massacre. So I'll just take four. And another Tireless Tracker to play. And a tap land. Okay. So I'm liking Cavalier, and then give the team hastes. And then the question is do we get rid of Sweltering Suns or keep it as an answer to Tireless Tracker? Although they could potentially get it up to 4 toughness next turn. So I don't think we need Sweltering Suns. I'll activate and smash. And do I play my land out? This one we can probably keep to discard to Cavalier next turn. Table Passage can make a ton of cool tokens here. So, Moment of Truth. Does our opponent have removal for Cavalier? Or do we get to untap with two of them? Opponent goes digging. Only two mana left. How many lands do we have in the graveyard? Zero. Also relevant with Cavalier's ability here. And an extra reason to maybe keep some lands to discard. So yeah, discard two of them. And then we can activate Cavalier, attack with a team, and then still Voltage Surge, or I can kill the Underdog first to clear a blocker as opposed to trying to finish off Siege Rhino. Even have our Citadel to potentially sacrifice in a pinch. But this should be lethal. Awesome, so pretty grindy matchup here against Amazon Midrange, but Monored Fires got it done without a namesake card. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems acceptable. Some early removal to protect our Chandra, which can hopefully pull us ahead. And turn one, a Lobster Beast adventured. Not an elf. So I'm gonna wait to... Uh, Voltage Surge for now. Sweltering Suns can maybe clean up the human token. But a 5 5 beast isn't the easiest for us to kill. So we may need to clean up the 1 1s. Alright, Pack Leader also survives Voltage Surge. So we'll untap. And then I can potentially double Voltage Surge here if needed. Although most likely just Sweltering Suns next turn. Although they play like a Steel Leaf Champion, we can maybe kill it, as it doesn't die to Suns. So we'll take four. And another Pack Leader, perfect. So, wipe the board. Draw 
triple voltage surge in hand. So we can maybe combine one with uh, four damage from Chandra to take out a 5-5. Five -five. Opponent going for Steel Leaf, that's even better. So we can deal four to finish it off. And have a Chandra in play. Picked up an indestructible land plus wildfire to potentially ramp. No creature lands from the opponent I care about. Removing. And a Cavalier too. Well, now I'm probably going for Cavalier plus Haste. Although I guess your opponent's probably going for a Collected Company here, given that they didn't uh, play the Lovestruck Beast. So we have to be prepared for that. So is it better to then maybe keep up Double Voltage Surge and have a Cavalier to block? As opposed to going for Wildfire. Since we don't really need the extra mana from Wildfire at this point. So I could see getting rid of it. And then maybe one Voltage Surge can go to find more threats. Okay. And then I'm not gonna attack. Protect our Chandra. As we see a Collected Company. Ooh, just finding two Elves. Not what the opponent was hoping for. Although they do enable Lost Rogue Beast, at least. Could have tried to kill the elves with Voltage Surge. Might want to hang on to them to take out bigger problem cards. And now with Citadel we can sacrifice an artifact to deal four. So... Could also just double Voltage Surge, the Steel Leaf, and then next turn play a Cavalier and just smash. Which I also don't mind. Yeah, let's go with that instead. And then they'll likely trade Beast for one of the Cavaliers. So add mana. Cavalier, and then I think I just discard both my cards. Putting extra lands in the graveyard is also helpful for Cavalier's ability. Okay, and then activates, attack, and I suspect we'll see a trade. They could still finish off Chandra thanks to Hashap Oasis. But as the dust settles we've got a Cavalier and a sizable mana advantage. Play out one more land can keep the other one to maybe discard to a Fable of the Mirror Breaker or another Cavalier if we draw it. So we could be in a better spot, assuming Chandra dies here. For point has another large creature to block Cavalier. But our opponent's gonna be pretty low in life as well. This is a waste of my time. And another Lostrug Beast will do exactly that. Although Chandra's not bad. So let's see, I can play Chandra, and then I'm guessing the 1-1's one gonna chump anyway, so pumping the Cavalier more doesn't matter, so then we might as well exile the top card and potentially cast it, and I'll play the land in case it's the Sweltering Suns. Bonecrusher, I guess now we'll stomp the 1-1 one one so they cannot chump. And next turn we can give the Giant Haste. So our opponent's going to need to keep back both our Mystics. Alright, Scavenging Ooze can be scary if our opponent gets to untap with a bunch of mana. So let's see here, we can kill the Ooze, play Bone Crusher, pump it twice. And then Beast trades for Cavalier, Elf chumps, and we're left with a Bone Crusher and a Chandra. That sounds good enough to me. And they're not allowed to tap the Elf to activate Ooze, otherwise they're just gonna be dead. So we can attack. Beast trades Elf Chumps. Keep Citadel in hand. I 
and our opponent explodes. Awesome, it's another great performance from Chandra, lining up against those four toughness creatures. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got the Wildfire plus Indestructible Land to start out. Bunch of removal, hopefully find the fires along the way. And then I think we play the Indestructible Land in case we pick up Den of the Bugbear. That way we can actually uh, still Wildfire and not skip a beat. Opponent fetching with Fabled Passage for a mountain, and Chandra can be cast next turn, so that's exciting. Get our mountain. Plenty of removal to protect our Planeswalker. Let's see what type of deck our opponent's on. A Sacrifice deck. Alright, can be rough, but a Planeswalker goes a long way. And then do we want to deal damage or maybe stomp the opponent's face? At which point we might as well just plus and deal two damage. So our game plan, kill all the opponent's stuff and ride this Chandra to victory, pretty much. So here... We have to be mindful of playing Bonecrusher and having it stolen by Claim the Firstborn. So maybe I just... Sweltering Suns, and then keep plusing Chandra. If I plus for mana, I can keep up a bunch of other spot removal and not play my Bone Crusher yet, since the two damage here is probably negligible. So what's Sweltering Suns? Opponent gets to Sag Devil and deal a damage on the way out. And then, yeah, I don't think we want to play Bone Crusher, but we can keep up Stomp plus Voltage Surge. If our opponent plays another Mayhem Devil, let's say, we want to Stomp first and then Voltage Surge, otherwise they can sack to us casting the Stomp and then we will fizzle the adventure essentially and we won't be able to cast a creature, whereas they're unlikely to sacrifice in response to just a Stomp. Gilded Goose. Plus, Witch's Oven can essentially do the same as we just described, so we probably just want a Voltage Surge, if we even care about Gilded Goose. Could also just cycle Sweltering Suns, untap, and then deal with a Goose in our turn, which is maybe more efficient, and we can dig for some more threats. Then maybe don't get stolen by a Claim. Right, opponent plays another Gilded Goose. And we draw another Sweltering Suns, so the timing was a little awkward, was planning to do that end of turn, but I guess it's worked out. So how do we want to sequence our spells? Chandra can add mana, I can Sweltering Suns and once again keep up a bunch of removal to try and ultimate our Chandra. So they can make one more food token. And pass it back. And then we need to get to 7 loyalty before we can ultimate. Trail of Crumbs for card advantage can be pretty strong here. But they still need an answer to Chandra. So do I double stomp their face with a plan of maybe just playing two Bone Crushers next turn? That could work. Although there's also an argument for keeping the stomp until after we ultimate. That's not bad. So if I add mana, I can play both Bone Crushers, still a Voltage Surge potentially sacking Citadel if we're in a pinch. And this way we're also diversifying our threats in case the opponent somehow finds an answer to Chandra. Alright, opponent passes. And yeah, time to ultimate. And we've got a backup Chandra to follow up right away. And that should pretty much seal the deal. Don't think there's any main deck cards and the sacrifice decks to counter activated or triggered abilities. 
Although sometimes something you want to watch out for, since they do exist. So now we get to play Chandra, deal 5 to our opponent's face, add some mana, play Fable, dealing 5 more. And we can attack, or if we really wanted to, just Voltage Surge, dealing 5 more. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a pretty nice start. Wildfire ramping into Chandra. And then a Golos, which we can maybe ramp out using our 2 mana. Well, let's see what we're up against. Mountain and Firebrand, so red aggro deck. It's gonna make it a little trickier to keep Chandra around. So we'd love to draw Sweltering Suns and more of our cheaper spot removal. Although Golos at 5 toughness at least is likely to survive. Cavalier's not bad. As always, hoping for Fires of Invention as well to really supercharge our deck. And there's Voltage Surge, okay. So we have the option of maybe Chandra plus for mana and then Voltage Surge to keep more loyalty. So do we see Burning Tree Emissary or maybe a Robber of the Rich? Just a stomp on our face, that works. So do not mind seeing that. Okay. I think we still play Mountain to have more red for Cavalier at the moment, even though Citadel can be sacrificed to a Voltage Surge later. And then Chandra plus for mana. I think I'm okay killing Firebrands. Fire yep. it's also potentially an annoying blocker that can just jump Cavalier and soak up a ton of damage. So if our opponent didn't have any great 2-drops, they probably have a good Annex into maybe Embercleave follow-up. But Chandra can take care of Annex. And uh, can play Golos before playing Cavalier, or we can Cavalier give it haste, but I think I should clean up Annex first. So we'll do that, and play Golos. And then next turn we can haste our Cavalier if we want to. Golos can grab another Den. As we already have Cascading Cataracts to maybe activate Golos. And with the mana from Chandra, we can realistically do that next turn already. It's going to be Kumano dealing one to Chandra, so they might be able to finish her off. Nope, just a Bone Crusher. Alright, so do we feel like activating Golos or playing Cavalier? Activating Golos is more fun, so let's try that instead. And then don't want to play land yet in case we find one of Golos. Okay, back up Golos, Wildfire, probably our own land, and Fable, so those are all great. So we probably want to attack first, and then uh, play our backup Golos afterwards. And then thin out a deck with Golos before drawing with the wildfire. Get another den. Wildfire, our own cataracts. Get a land. And play free fable. And another den. Okay, that's a pretty exciting turn. More than double the amount of lands that our opponent controls. And still a great hand to work with here, although I do have to watch out for an Ember Cleave. So opponent can cleave for 4 mana. How upset are we if we lose Golos? Probably want to avoid losing it. Next turn I could play Cavalier, play Bone Crusher, give the team haste. So if I just block here, make them use Ember Cleave on Bone Crusher. Pretty sure we can just outright kill our opponents. So I don't think I need to do anything else. And we're not in danger of dying to an Embercleave. Now this doesn't force them to use it, 
So they may go for a different line of just playing a couple creatures out. But hopefully they still feel inclined to cleave. Alright, there it is. So we're at five. But our opponent seems very dead. Can this card land on Sweltering Suns? Picked up another Cavalier. A Fires of Invention would have been fun too, but so it goes. So add some mana. Play Cavalier. Can even play another Cavalier if we'd like. And still give the team haste. And with a treasure from our Goblin Shaman, we could even cast a Voltage Surge with 4 damage, as we can sacrifice a Darksteel Citadel to take out Bone Crusher. So we're living the dream. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems acceptable. Bunch of spot removal to clear a path for our uh, Shaman token, which can hopefully generate a bit of mana. Turn one Hive into Thoughtseize. Probably takes Fable, leaving us with a whole bunch of removal. Takes Bone Crusher instead, as we draw another. That works. So maybe they're more of a creature aggro deck, or I guess Ragdos mid-range, and they might have plenty of answers to our Shaman token. That's okay. They can Fatal Push. Next turn we get to maybe discard Double Voltage Surge in the hopes of finding more relevant spells. Opponent's got the Rune Stomp instead. And a Trespasser. Not something we want to target with two removal spells if we can help it. Now we could still sacrifice a Citadel, but that seems kind of painful, so... Let's just get rid of Voltage Surge, I don't think we need it. And the Sweltering Sun's a much better answer. Although we could be patient and maybe get rid of both a Giant and a Trespasser. And then for now just wildfire our own land to ramp. Also an argument for taking out their creature lands, but the ramp seems useful. Chandra's not bad either. So it doesn't transform to night. And we still have some interaction available. Ideally next turn play Chandra, plus for mana Sweltering Suns after they played Bone Crusher. Trespasser gets rid of a Voltage Surge. And Kalitas. Alright, so we can take out Kalitas with either Voltage Surge sacking Citadel or Chandra dealing 4 damage. Let's see, do we have enough mana to Chandra add mana? I guess if we draw land, I can also finish off Kalitas with Voltage Surge in addition to Sweltering Suns. Or I can just Voltage Surge now, Sacking Citadel, and then Chandra can also kill Trespasser. So a lot to consider. I guess Sweltering Suns is going to be a little awkward with our Reflection coming up. So maybe it is fine to just kill Kalitas here end of turn with a Voltage Surge and then keep Chandra at a healthier loyalty. Okay, so do we Chandra kill Trespasser? There are still creature lands to worry about to potentially finish off Chandra. So yeah, once again quite a few options. What do we discard to the wards if we do minus Chandra? Maybe a Sweltering Suns and then play Den. So things could have lined up a little bit better for us, but we're still a little bit ahead on board with our Planeswalker and a Reflection. 
Opponents go to Rune Chandra. And that's just gonna plus. Maybe finish off our reflection. Nope. I'm gonna stomp our Chandra instead. Well, we have a Den that can kill Chandra in combination with Reflection. So that seems fine. Alternatively, I could play Bone Crusher, copy it, but that's only 4 damage. So activating Den seems like the better solution. And then Wildfire might end up killing one of their creature lands as well. So these two at Chandra. So can can go face. Whatever. Figure it out on your own. Coins got their own fable. So we can stomp the token. Copying giant seems pretty reasonable here with reflection, although we can keep that as an option on defense. What to do with the wildfire is also an interesting question, but we can maybe leave that for next turn. Could also wait to maybe stomp the fable, but then we're not playing giant for quite some time. So I'll pass. And then we can end of turn copy giants and still attack with it in our next turn, assuming it doesn't get removed by their top deck. Chandra has to decide if it wants to kill one of my creatures, which it does. Copy giants. So this one will go away end of turn, so not going to see an attack from their giants, that's for sure. So I can send Dan and giants at the opponent while the one ones go after Chandra, and then we can still wildfire. And I'll have to make up my mind what we want to take out, but it's probably going to be the opponent's creature land. Opponent can kill a 1 1 for free or trade. And which creature land are we most scared of? Probably there, Den of the Bugbear. And a Chandra and all the bats left over here. Can take out the reflection before it does more damage. Although the game's still very close. Underdog, yeah, that's gonna be something that can easily swing the game back in the opponent's favor as we pick up another Chandra. So if we attack with Bone Crusher, opponent just blocks with Underdog, so that doesn't seem worthwhile. So probably just Chandra killing a Reflection. And then we can stay back. Maybe trade Bone Crusher for Bone Crusher. And see where things end up. Opponent animates Hive. And attacks with the team, just going face. So we can trade Bone Crushers if we'd like. Although, how close are we to presenting lethal? So our opponent is attacking for 14, so if I chump a giant, we take 10 down to 2. Next turn, I could fire up Den, attack alongside giants, that's 8. Activate Chandra. Puts them to 1, but I have to block with my 1-1 one, one to survive here. So we're not quite presenting lethal, which is a shame. So where does that leave us? Do we trade? I think so. And then probably keep the 1-1 one, one around and take 10 down to 2. Although I might be better off chumping as a giant now. What if I top deck Cavalier? How does that change the math? I could play Cavalier, activate it, that would most likely kill the opponent if we keep Bone Crusher Giant. So maybe that's still a reason to just jump here with a 1-1. One, one. 
and give ourselves the out of top decking cavalier for the win. Does Bone Crusher do it? Yeah, I think we have two mana left over to stomp, so we can activate Den, hit them for eight, and then two damage with Chandra and two more from Stomp to seal the deal. Alright, so we had more outs than just Cavalier, so another reason to hang on to our Bone Crusher. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we finally have our Fires of Invention in our opening hand. So yeah, we'll give this a shot. Ideally pick up our Wildfire, so we can Invention on 3 already. And uh, play an indestructible land in case we draw Den of the Bugbear next turn. Opponent on a red deck, turn 1 Kumano. That's scary. Our hand is a little bit on the slow side, admittedly. But hopefully Fires can get us back in the game. Turn to Burning Tree. Into a Robber, so yeah. Opponent off to a perfect start. Might need a sweeper here to catch us back up, and there it is. So do I just Sweltering Suns now? I think so. Could wait to also kill the 2-2, but then we take a ton of extra damage in the process. And this way we also don't kill our own Shaman token. Turn 3, gonna be a Goblin Shamwirler. So at least no Annex in hand. And it's time for Fires plus Fable. And next turn we can play Cavalier and activate it a few times. Happy to trade the Shaman for Etching. If we get the chance. But a Stomp's gonna take care of our Goblin. Alright, so we're taking 6. Could use another Sweltering Suns. Voltage Surge, also pretty decent. So what do I get rid of? I can only cast two spells. One of them presumably Cavalier, which may have to stay back on defense. I do need a land to cast Cavalier. Voltage Surge can kill, let's say, Chain Warlord if I sacrifice Darksteel Citadel. Keeping Fable could be nice alongside Cavalier as well. Although next turn we'll get Reflection, which can copy Cavalier. So we definitely have a lot of options. The fire's a little bit awkward if our opponent has an Ember Cleave. But I'm probably just going to main phase kill the Chain Warler. So Chain Warler plus another Stomp, for instance, cannot take care of Cavalier. So I think we just get rid of Fable since we probably have better top decks. Another fire's probably discarded by Cavalier. So play this for zero. Get rid of fires. And then Voltage Surge now. Killing Chain Warler, sacrificing Citadel. And I'm gonna hang back. Next turn we can copy Cavalier with our Reflection by giving it haste with Cavalier. So all the more reason to keep our Cavalier around. Another Voltage Surge, can kill Etching. So now the question is, do we want to main phase, use Reflection on Cavalier? We could use it as a blocker or as an attacker. I think I'm maybe better served doing it in the opponent's turn. And then Voltage Surge just kills Etching now. And I'll keep a land in hand to maybe discard to the copy of Cavalier. Have to watch out for an Ember Cleave here if they have another land. And hopefully they don't have another Stomp to kill Reflection in response to me activating Cavalier. Which I guess would be a reason to play the Mountain, that way we can activate Cavalier twice and still have the mana to activate Reflection, so we can still copy Cavalier in the face of a Stomp. Alright, no attacks from our opponents. Activate Cavalier. Activate Reflection in the end step here. 
this card lands, pick up a Chandra, and the Sweltering Suns is looking mighty fine as well. So I can copy Cavalier once more, play Chandra if I'd like, Chandra can uh, deal 2 damage since we can cast the Sweltering Suns for free, or we can add mana to pump Cavaliers more, and then we'll have 3 Cavaliers attacking after we clean the board with Sweltering Suns, just going face. So that should be lethal. All their opponents may not be here to witness it. We also have 2 lands in our graveyard, so end of turn when we sacrifice Cavalier to the Reflections ability, it's also going to deal more damage on the way out, which is pretty satisfying. So play Chandra, cast okay, Sweltering Suns for zero mana. This can add double reds, and we pump. Okay, sweet. So it took a while to finally get to see more of Fires of Invention in action, but you can see the crazy synergy here with Cavalier, and Reflection also great with Cavalier and Fires, giving us more mana to use the activated ability, and we leveled up. So yeah, this deck was a delight to both put together and play, has a ton of synergies all the way from Wildfire plus Indestructible lands to some more subtle synergies like the one with Voltage Surge, sometimes sacrificing Citadel, and then of course cards like Fable alongside Cavalier, Golos, and then also having Den of the Bugbear as a great mana sink once we have a Fires in play. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.